to uh, open up the National Apprenticeship Appreciation. I, would, uh, I can't say how grateful I am to have uh, Governor Haley here today, uh, along with uh, Secretary uh, Jones and also Secretary Augustus. Um, we stand here today in the Boston Carpenters Apprenticeship and Training Center. And the funny thing about this building is just a couple years ago, uh, we were not open to apprentices here. Uh, my predecessor, Tom Flynn, who was currently the EST, he's now the first general vice president of the UBC, uh, looked at this training center and said this was vastly underused. And our main training facility is in Millbury, Mass., which is roughly just under an hour. And we found that a lot of our members from Boston didn't have access to transportation there. And so one of the first things he did was open this up to the great residents of Boston. And what we all got to see today when we walked around, you know, it is Monday morning, so we don't have a lot of walls um, built just yet. But I promise you that if you come back tomorrow, uh, Tuesday, Wednesday, or Thursday, you will see a starkly different um, building here today. And uh, so with that being said, just touch a base on who we are. We represent roughly just over 30,000 uh, union carpenters. We have over 2,500 apprentices throughout New England and New York. Uh, and within those numbers, we represent roughly 30% roughly 30 uh, people of color in our apprenticeship program and 13% women. So we strive to continue to progress. Uh, we have a lot of work to do, but I think right now we are doing great things and uh, I can't thank the governor and her entire team for being here today. And so without further ado, I would like to turn it over to our great governor of Massachusetts, Mara Haley. Thank you, Mara. Oh, Joe, thank you so much. I really, uh, really appreciate you, everything you do. Great to be back with the Carpenters. Great to be among all the folks from the North Atlantic States Council of Carpenters. Uh, and what a, what a great way for us to start the week. It really, really is. I'm delighted to be joined by my colleagues in government, our Secretary of Labor and Workforce Development, Lauren Jones, who is out there hustling every day, uh, looking for ways to support workers, <laughs> along with her great team from our Division of Apprenticeship Standards. We have Patrick Mitchell, uh, Margie Gilligan, Dennis Collins, Pat Ray. Thank you all for what you do. Um, also joining us is our Secretary of Housing and Livable Communities at Augustus, as you know, housing production, that's a, that's a top goal of this administration. I also want to recognize our colleagues in government, Representative John Moran, thank you so much. Important budget work, important tax cut work, um, appreciate that partnership. And I want to recognize our apprentices, who you'll hear from soon, Amanda Bacon and Jonathan Rodriguez, who are going to share their experiences of what this is all about. This is National Apprenticeship Week in the United States, and we thought no better place to recognize that and kick it off than right here in, uh, at the Carpenters. And, you know, we just came through. Um, we visited a few classrooms. It was awesome to see the different kinds of instruction and work going on. We just uh, met with folks who are learning and practicing mill work. And one of the women we heard from is a woman who was working at a mill work company and through the apprenticeship program was reached out to and said, hey, why don't you come train with us? And Louisa, you did. And you're here now, you know, every three months back here learning um, while also earning and setting yourself up for a great, great career. So just an example of why this stuff is so important, why we were proud to put forward historic levels of funding to get more apprenticeships out there all across this country, and why we're, uh, why we're celebrating here today. Um, we believe in apprenticeship because it works for workers in terms of building careers. It also works for employers and for growing our economy. And we're in a growth mode. That's what this team is about. You know, I have said we want our state to be more affordable, more competitive, more equitable, creating opportunity for everybody across the state. And the work that's being done here, such an important cog in that economic engine. So exciting to see. Apprentices, remember, get paid. They get paid for their work experience, combining both classroom instruction and on-the-job training. No better way to go than that, and which has led to a nationally recognized credential 
and a great career. That's what these folks are doing. And the employers, in turn, get highly skilled workers to fill jobs that we know are desperately needed to be filled here uh, and around the state. So we're all in on apprenticeship. Uh, what do I mean by that? I mean in our first budget, we committed to nearly $4 million to grow apprenticeships in Massachusetts. We have approximately 1,300 apprentices participating in 250 different apprenticeship programs supported by the state. And this new investment that we're able to achieve this year in the budget is going to result in over 1,000 new Luisas, right, all over the state, just on the job training, ready to go. It's really, really exciting. Second, in our tax cut package, we expanded the registered apprenticeship tax credit program to make more industries eligible. Why is this important? Because it's, companies can now receive up to $4,800 a year for taking a tax credit for taking on an apprenticeship, a, a, apprentice. At least 28 employers and 200 apprentices have benefited, collectively receiving more than $10 million in wages. Those are wages to apprentices, and those are wages that are going to families here in Massachusetts. It's really, really important. This is about opportunity. Um, this is why we made the investments in the budget and also in the tax package. We need to see more apprentices. We need to celebrate apprenticeship programs like the fantastic one here at place, in place at um, the Carpenters. Our labor and workforce development team is hiring specialists right now to ensure diverse and equitable access to these positions and to these programs. And, you know, I've said that um, I, acknowledge the, I acknowledge the challenges that we face as a state. And, you know, one of those challenges is a labor shortage here and across the country. The other is a housing shortage here and across the country. But we are doing something about this here in Massachusetts. And this program and these careers, these jobs are key to addressing both of those issues. So we want to thank you, Joe, for once again hosting us um, and for giving us the opportunity to see what this is all about um, through the wonderful work being done here at the Carpenters. I'd like now to introduce our fabulous Secretary of Labor and Workforce Development, Lauren Jones. Happy Apprenticeship Week to everybody. <laughs> You know, Governor Healy's remarks were spot on, so thank you, Governor, for your leadership on this, and, and certainly thank you to the Carpenters, Joe, and the team here for helping us kick off an amazing week where we'll be going throughout the Commonwealth to celebrate apprentices, the investment the state is making, and the partnership with labor and employers to help lift up more opportunities for our workforce because we know that this model is a proven model to help build the workers, and the talent that we need. Um, this is an opportunity for really showcasing the great work that's already being done, but also to help promote, to get more, both people in the pipeline as well as employers to team up with us, um, especially as we think about pathways to bring in more diverse talent, more women, more people of color um, into the building trades like here in the Carpenters, as well as into so many more industries that are desperate for talent here in Massachusetts. Um, for me as secretary, um, I had the pleasure of joining the governor and lieutenant governor at the start of the administration, and I appreciated that out of the gate, both Governor Healy and Lieutenant Governor Driscoll were already convinced on the value of registered apprenticeship. Um, and it's because of training facilities like here at the Carpenters that demonstrate how effective this model is. We know the value of technical training combined with on-the-job training is that recipe for success. You can help to use this model to bring in people that didn't even know they could be a carpenter, like the apprentices we were hearing from today, and create a meaningful pathway that means good jobs, wages, benefits, and economic mobility for themselves, their families, and certainly our community. Uh, as I think about how can we drive more opportunities like this, I know that when we think about our workforce agenda, when we think about our competitiveness, at the heart of it really has to be our people. It's represented by the apprentices here today, the journey workers that are across 
um, construction sites throughout Massachusetts. Um, we're also thinking about those people that have yet to reach their potential, that have yet to be tapped, are still studying in our K-12 schools and may not even realize that they can be that future carpenter. And we want to make sure that we can spark that interest at an early age. We also want to make sure that we can connect those who are disconnected from our workforce today to plug into apprenticeships and pathways to invest in themselves and certainly our workforce. Uh, the registered apprenticeship model has been proven time and time again, and I appreciate the leadership of the carpenters and others within the building trades who have been at this for decades. It is why the U.S. Department of Labor and here in Massachusetts, we decided to expand this kind of proven model to reach expanded industries, thinking about how registered apprenticeship can be a tool for success in healthcare, biotech manufacturing, finance, and it's all based on that on-the-job training and technical assistance that we know has paid off time and time again. We also realize that this is a tool that we need to lift up, and so as the governor said, we appreciate the fact that we have already been able to build on the FY24 budget. Um, thanks to leveraging federal dollars as well as the state dollars, we're already on our way to investing that $3.5 million that we've been able, to, the over four, almost $4 million that we've been able to receive from the state, but also federal dollars, they'd be able to ensure we can invest in pre-apprenticeships, registered apprenticeships, and those pathways. And so we're appreciative of that, and we celebrate that throughout this week, and we'll continue to do that moving forward. But as we think about how we get more people in construction. I was sharing this with Amanda, who you'll hear from in a little bit. We need to make sure that we are doing our part to encourage the future Louisas and Amandas. And we know that one of the things that we can celebrate throughout this week is the diversity in the construction and building trades. We want to make sure that the investments that we're putting in in the state dollars are helping to bridge more pathways. And as the governor mentioned, we're investing in opportunities to have specialists ensure that our dollars are helping to support more pathways for women and people of color to come into uh, this great um, workforce training program and model. And we also know at the end of the day, in order for us to build that competitive spirit that the governor often speaks about, we have to make sure that there are opportunities and people see themselves in careers like this. So I look forward to hearing from Amanda as well as Jonathan, our two apprentices, who will share their personal stories. Um, but before we pass the baton to them, I'd love to introduce my colleague in the governor's cabinet, Secretary Augustus, who's leading the administration's work on housing product production, and you'll hear a few remarks from him as well. Thank you. Well, thank you, Secretary Jones, uh, for that introduction, and it's great to be here with the Carpenters uh, this morning. Um, and, Governor, I want to thank you for your leadership uh, to strengthen Massachusetts's competitiveness and make it an affordable place to live and work. I'm glad to be here and cel help celebrate uh, Apprenticeship Week with all of you, and I want to thank Joe Byrne and our friends at the Carpenters for hosting us and for your continued partnership to build a strong Massachusetts workforce. Our state is in the midst of a housing crisis. That has been decades in the making. At the root is supply and demand. We, have, we just haven't been building enough housing. And that's not, and there's not enough housing, when there's not enough housing, prices skyrocket. That means a dream of home ownership or sometimes even renting a decent apartment is out of reach for too many families. And some of you have felt this for yourselves. You're working day in and day out, socking away all you can for that dream home, putting, but rents have gone up, and even, even if you've saved enough for the down payment, homes are going way above asking price. The same people who build our homes can no longer afford them. That's wrong, and we need to change it. The good news is, the governor last month filed the Affordable Homes Act, a big and bold bill that authorizes $4.1 billion for a host of programs that jumpstart housing production and preservation. It includes 28 policy changes to give communities more tools to unlock housing where they need it. 
and promote fair housing and protect our most vulnerable residents. This means more construction and more housing that people can afford. And apprenticeships are critical to making it all happen. Apprenticeships are a vital part of building up the pipeline of skilled and trained carpenters and trades workers of all kinds. We're on a mission to build, and we're going to need you now and in the years ahead to help us turn back the tide of ri rising home prices by increasing housing production. But we have, to do what, we have to do it right. And it's not just about what and where we build, but it's also about how we build. We need to ensure the thousands of jobs that are created through the Affordable Homes Act are good jobs. Good jobs for families like yours. Good jobs that will help you afford a place that you call home. Good jobs with responsible developers and contractors who treat their workers with the dignity and respect they deserve. We also want to be intentional about who we build for. About 80% of the funding in the Affordable Homes Act is targeted toward housing for low- and middle-income families. That includes a historic $1.6 billion to improve and rehabilitate over 43,000 units of public housing in our state's portfolio. The Affordable Homes Act authorizes $100 million for Commonwealth Builder Program to help construct affordable single-family homes for families with moderate incomes, particularly in communities of color. It invests $200 million for the Housing Innovation Fund to support creative and alternative forms of rental housing, including housing for seniors, veterans, and transitional units for people recovering from substance use disorder. And it also pumps $100 million into the Middle Income Housing Fund to develop homes for teachers, nurses, first responders, construction workers, municipal employees, and other middle income families. The Affordable Homes Act, coupled with the significant increases in the state low income tax, housing tax credits that the governor signed into law last month, will supercharge our affordable housing production and help residents in every corner of the Commonwealth. But housing doesn't build itself. The people passing legislation or underwriting the loans or rezoning residential neighborhoods, these folks aren't holding the nail guns and the saws. They're not hanging drywall and finishing cabinets. You can't build a house without a carpenter. That's why we need to invest in the trades and in apprenticeship programs. Without you, it's just rhetoric and appropriations. With you, we're building a future in which everyone has a place they can afford to call home. Now it's a great pleasure for me to introduce two of your uh, fellow apprentice, apprentices. Uh, first, Amanda Bacon, who's going to say the words first, and then we're going to have Jonathan Rodriguez uh, follow her. Amanda? Good morning. My name is Amanda Bacon, and I am here to share a little bit of my story with you. Basically, this wonderful program can give someone who had a start to start their life completely over the opportunity of a lifetime. I always refer to this apprenticeship program as, and the union as my golden ticket. I grew up in Reading, Massachusetts. I currently reside today in Dorchester. Dorchester is my home. I love Boston. Today I stand before you as a proud, very proud member of Local 327 in this union, celebrating my fourth year in this remarkable apprenticeship program. My background is one of challenges and triumphs. After spending four years incarcerated, I found myself with nothing but $100 in my pocket, no possessions, no support. I became caught in a cycle of dead-end jobs that held no promise of a future, retirement, no promise of a livable wage. No one will hire an individual with any kind of record. I couldn't even get a job at Target. I, despite having plenty of work experience and lots of drive, I couldn't find any, any meaningful work. Work has always been very important to me, but I was determined to find a career path. It was during a chance encounter while I was working at Dunkin' Donuts that my life took a turn. 
construction workers watching me work my heart out making their food every day came with some profound advice. You have to join the union. I said, what do you mean? They said, each day they would come in and say, join the electrician's union, join the sheet metal union, join the carpenters, join the laborers, and it just put the bug in my ear. Let's see. Um, pondering my options, I decided to pursue, <laughs> pursue a career as a carpenter. I attended the first info session about four years ago. That decision changed my whole life. That info session blew my mind. I knew instantly this was what I wanted to do for the rest of my life. This was my career path. After joining the apprenticeship, I started working for Terra Construction. Within three months, I had my own apprentices. I'm still employed at Terra Construction, and I consider myself very lucky. We're a family. This company has taught me how to work every different kind of carpentry. We do frame to finish, and I love it. We work on Section 8 and community construction projects and bring positive change and gratitude from those we serve. I love this work, and every renovation project becomes a source of pride for me. Through this apprenticeship, I've learned the importance of perseverance. I've realized that opportunities do exist for those who seek them, and that you put into your work, everything you put into what you do, it comes back to you. The union has been my lifeline providing health care, eye care, dental care, retirement benefits. These benefits are not just perks. They've allowed me to afford my necessary medical care without breaking the bank. I share my story to encourage those who may be facing similar struggles. If you're unable to afford college and possess a passion for working with your hands, the union is your golden ticket. It's an opportunity for a fulfilling career that supports your family and secures your future. The union is here for those who can't invest thousands in college education. It's a pathway to a better life for anyone willing to work hard, and I will be forever grateful. Thank you. Morning. <clears throat> My name is Jonathan Rodriguez. I, I live in Peabody, Massachusetts, and I'm a proud third-year apprentice with Local Union 339. I was, uh, after serving in the Marine Corps, I found myself as a non-union sign installer. And uh, as the pandemic unfolded, I began to realize my current job didn't provide the opportunities I needed for the future I envisioned for me and my family. That's when a friend and fellow union member started talking up the benefits and opportunities that the union provided. Interested, I decided to explore further and attended an info session for the carpentry apprenticeship. What I've discovered in my apprenticeship goes beyond just the skills of the trade. One profound lesson that resonates deeply with me is the importance of community. In the union, we stand together advocating for each other, and it's this, union, this, this unity that provides us incredible opportunities, such as a comprehensive health care package and very competitive retirement package. It's a testament to the strength we find when we work collectively towards a common goal. Currently, I'm proud to be contributing my skills at Bonico Inc., an acoustical sailing company. This apprenticeship has not only equipped me with the skills needed for a successful career, but has also opened doors to a sense of belonging within a community that values each member. A union apprenticeship provides more than just a job. It's a gateway to a future filled with opportunities and support. It's about standing together, lifting each other up, and building a community that thrives. If you're seeking a path that goes beyond the ordinary, I recommend considering a union apprenticeship, an opportunity that not only shapes careers, but also transforms lives. Thank you.
Yeah, it's tape. No, you good? take some on-topic questions if there are any. Okay. <laughs> well, no. Class dismissed. Everybody, doesn't it smell good? All the millwork, you smell that? That's good. That's like, that's uh, construction. We love it. It's great. Get back to work, everybody. Great to see you. Thank you so much.